Good morning, everyone. It's lovely to see you today, and I hope you're having a great weekend. It's very sort of cool and cloudy this weekend, which is nice. It's a great weekend to stay inside and pack charts, which is what I had planned, so it all works out. We're going to jump right into the swing of things with Stitching in Action, and we have some extra fun ones this time. First off, Debbie stitched two. She did Tudor Goat, and this is on Tin Roof Fabric. So thank you, Debbie. You're the first one to show the goat. I appreciate that. And I really love the white frame that you chose. It really sets off the colors of the design. So thank you for sharing that. Debbie also did Spring Forest Scrapbook, and she did hers on 32 Count Dragonfly Fabric. I love the way you finished it, and I love that you can actually kind of see the little colored pins as a design choice around the edge just inside of the frame. Hopefully you can see that in the picture. It's really, really pretty. Thank you, Debbie, for sharing that with us. Next up, we have Stitcher's Gonna Stitch by Jessie, and she was absolutely drunk with power. I love it. Go, Jessie. She <laughs> used ice blue Zweigert fabric and a whole color conversion, which I'm actually going to put on the website. She shared her conversion with me, so I'll make sure when I post it online that I get all of those colors in there. I love it. I love the way the whole thing is changed to be just yours, so thank you very much for sharing that with us, Jessie. Finally, we have Kathy who did Stitching Squirrels, and this is from the original release. This is one of the designs coming out this summer, but Kathy had the original chart here, and I really like the way that she finished the tray with the, it almost looks metallic trim around the edge. So that's really beautiful. Thank you so much for sharing that, Kathy. Fun, fun, fun stitching in action this time. Next up, what I'm stitching, and actually I have two, because last time I had something to show and I completely forgot this section of my notes, so totally skipped over it. So this time I have last videos and this videos to talk about. So jumping right in, in the last, well, I guess two videos ago, I was going to work on this Fragments in Time from Summerhouse Stitchworks. Such a beautiful chart. Let's see if I can get it to focus on that. But you can see it has the little deer and this tiny little pillow, and my plan was to change it to look more like rye. And I will put a photograph up here because it's so small it's hard to see. But I think it came out so beautifully. Now I did have an issue, and again I'll put the photograph up. There's several of these red berries and none of them actually touch the little border. I stitched one in the wrong place and it touched the border. And normally I wouldn't let something like that get to me, but it was bothering me because it was more visible than I would like. And so I did something I've done often in the past, which is I found some DMC that's very close to the fabric, stitched over the mistake so that it's hidden. And let's see if you can see. Right there, under my finger, you can see there's a little stitch. You probably can't see, but little stitch and I just covered it up. So if you ever get stuck, there's a trick. You can always cover up your mistakes, a bit like an eraser. I also, for the first time, successfully used polyfill. And thanks to all the training I've received from people, I very carefully shredded it into the tiniest little polyfill <laughs> bits that I could manage. And usually I use walnut shells on them, but this one I thought might be an ornament, and so I wanted it to be lighter. And uh, yeah, it came out really well. I had some Lady Dot Chenille in my stash and a little bit of scrap fabric on the back. So we have rye now. She's gonna live on the shelves back there unless she becomes an ornament. I have also been working on the Greyhound Stitch because it's the year of stitching Greyhounds. And I've got, let's see, I'm gonna turn down my lights a little bit here. Because you can see it's got this very elaborate border, but it's pretty minimal in the center. And so I have actually started doing the center bits and I'm keeping it pretty pretty open in the center as well. So I've got Guinness, our first Greyhound. I'm doing all of them in chronological order. Guinness is up first, and then we'll have Ninkasi, and then Rye and Mosaic going down. But it's, it's pretty fun to see this one taking shape, and it's always nice when I get to do a little personal stitching too. Stash Spotlight, for reasons which will become clear, the theme of this floss tube seems to be cherries and lo and behold I picked up this great chart when I was at market this is bluebird in a cherry tree 
from Kathy Barrick and let's see if I can get it's always a little bit tricky to get the camera to see what I want it to see it's a bit more muted in the photograph than it is in person the fabric that she's got on there is silver fox from fiber on a whim which is one of my very favorite fabrics Stephanie and I used it for one of our scrapbooks and it's just oh it's a wonderful blue a little bit muted but goes with so many things and I just love I love the design. I love the way the red berries and the beautiful bird pop out against the background. I love that you have the option of doing the smaller pillow and that bird has a little crown on it. So yeah, really, really beautiful bluebird in a cherry tree. That's the Stash Spotlight, which leads me to the world around and the reason for the plethora of cherries <laughs> that's going on this week. And this lighting really is a bit too much. Okay, that's better. The reason is that I chose for this world around the Western Choke Cherry, which is a smallish tree, sometimes a large shrub, that is native to this Great Basin area. Actually, I think it has been growing wild from Canada down through Mexico for quite a long time. It's a lovely tree, and the reason it's on my mind this time of year is because it's blooming right now, and it has just this incredible spring almost heavy spring flower fragrance. You know, some spring flowers smell like they're just clean and wonderful, and some of them smell like they're almost laden with honey. And this is one of those really rich spring flowering trees. So we get to smell them every time we take the dogs out, just for a brief window, but it's a lovely window. And yeah, pretty cool. As I said, they've been wild here and native for quite a long time. They've been used by Northern Paiute and Pit River and Klamath peoples. They do have fruit, although people tend not to get a lot of it these days. <laughs> the birds tend to get it first. Also, it is a bitter fruit, hence choke cherry. And you have to be careful because the fruit has to be cooked for people to eat it. Animals can eat all of the fruit and parts of the tree, but people do have to be a little bit more careful because parts of the tree and the fruit can be toxic if not prepared the right way. But the tree, and by the tree, branches, roots, stems, leaves, <laughs> fruit, have been used to treat headaches, tuberculosis, arthritis. Um, the fruit is prepared and eaten, preserved for winter, by, again, the Northern Paiute, the Klamath, the Pit River people. So there's a lot going on here. And the wood has been used traditionally to make arrows, shields, and baskets. So... A lot of choke cherry history woven in around here. Now, one of my favorite nurseries and the source for these photographs, I'll put the info in the, the website notes, but they sell a lot of native plants. That's where I get a lot of native plants. And they describe plants, not just in terms of what kind of habitat they like, but they call them communities. And so, which I think is a really useful way to describe not just what conditions the plant likes, but what other plant communities do well in the same grouping. And so this is part of Chaparral community, Yellow Pine community, and Oakland, let's see, I'm gonna get it right, Scrub Oak, Central Oak woodland communities. So if you're in the market, in a place where the native choke cherry does well, the birds will definitely thank you. You may not get to try choke cherry, but they will certainly appreciate them and you can enjoy the beautiful blossoms. Questions. Last week, I asked about what sort of a class you would like me to see teaching at Jingle Ball, and thank you all for your wonderful suggestions. I've almost completely decided, but not 100% yet, so I've got a little bit more time to contemplate, but I really appreciate the ideas. The question this week, and this is a bit random, but I was thinking the other day about things that I use as units of measure, and it might be easier to see with an example. For example, when I'm rolling out dough and it needs to be, you know, 12 inches by 20 inches, I can know mentally that, well, 12 inches is just about the length of a letter size sheet of paper for me, which in my job is something I see all the time. And so that's something I'm very comfortable visualizing. I know roughly how big that is. Um, the most common one that I find I use is the size of a personal check, and that um, probably speaks to my age and the fact that I'm a bookkeeper, but I've used personal checks for so many years that they're roughly six inches across, and so that's kind of my measure of when I need to 
make a gap of right around six inches or if I'm looking at a design and figuring out how big it's going to be you know that's that's a visual translation in my head of the numbers of measurement so I was curious whether you have any of those numbers of measurement or I, I don't know what to call them really but something that you use to translate measurements into the reality in front of you you know whether it be the the length of your arm for a thread or whatever whatever you use so I was just really curious about that and that's my question best thing this video I've mentioned before we're working on the garden so we're growing both flowers and vegetables from seed I am extremely proud of my little teeny tiny <laughs> sprouts coming up I I'm trying not to let comparison steal my joy when I go to the nursery and they have big tomato plants, you know, this tall, already blooming. And uh, I just remind myself that I'm not competing. I am embarking on a journey to grow tomatoes and plants from seed. And then I come home and I see them and they're so beautiful and I just want to take care of them and nurture them and we'll see what happens. Worst case, I'll learn some things, even if we don't get a lot of tomatoes this year but it's been really, really interesting and rewarding so far. So that's the best thing. Giveaway, last video, two new releases that are coming out very soon. And so two winners, the two winners who use the word star in their comments are Pat Emek, and I don't know if it's Davy or Davy Evans. So both of you have won any one of my designs, including the two new ones. And uh, just let, get in touch with me, give me your address and let me know what you would like. Thank you all for the lovely star comments. I was really encouraged to see how many of you have stargazing as a part of your, your normal experience through from childhood memories or from going camping, all of those things. So really, really a nice thing to see. This video, again, inspired by the cherry theme. I have a lovely selection of threads from Victoria and Motto. And the first one here is Faded Cherry. And then we have a couple other, Wild Globe Flower, Prairie Grass, and Verbena. So I've chosen kind of a palette inspired by the choke cherry and also by flowers. So it's gonna be a little bit tough to get a good picture here because the lighting is just so weird, but and kind of see those cherry things. So if you use the word cherry in your comment in some creative way, put you in for the next video to win those four beautiful threads. Announcements. Two releases coming out. They came back from the printer a little sooner than expected, so they'll probably start heading out to shops on Monday as I get them packed up this weekend, but everything will be on the road by the following week at the latest. So. Hopefully sooner, but not much longer to wait. Which means that's what I'm spending my weekend doing and possibly a little bit of yard work, a little bit of going out and talking to the plants, <laughs> see how they're doing, <laughs> see if they need anything. <laughs> Very quiet weekend. My son is getting his wisdom teeth out, so we're gonna have a lot of low key, relaxing activity here for a couple days and a lot of soft food. We've got a brief puppy video at the end been a little bit, I don't know, I think I'm kerfluffily this weekend, but it's not the first time. I do really appreciate that I got a chance to sit down with you and the kerfluffling didn't, didn't get in the way of that, but I hope you have a very good weekend in whatever way you need and enjoy yourself. I look forward to seeing you again in about two weeks. Thank you. Bye.